Hello everyone and welcome to Maple Leaf ESL. My name is Andrew and thank you for joining me here today. For today's lesson, I want to take a look at some idioms, specifically clothing related idioms. So I have chosen seven idioms and we're going to look at some definitions and of course some examples. Okay, so let's see if we can start the lesson. So the first one here is off the cuff. Okay, and the definition says to say something without any planning or preparation. Okay, so if I make an off the cuff comment, this means I didn't plan to say it, I didn't think about it in advance, I just said it, right? Okay, so if, if, if it's my birthday party, for example, okay, and my friends, they say speech, speech, right? They want me to make a speech, okay, then of course, I didn't write a speech, right? I haven't planned anything, so I will make an off-the-cuff speech. Okay, if we think about an awards show, like the Academy Awards, okay, sometimes you see people and they have a little piece of paper and they sort of read off the paper. So that is not an off-the-cuff speech, okay? So remember, off-the-cuff is any time that you don't plan what you're saying, you just make the comment, right? Okay, let's look at the next one. So the next one says, to keep one's shirt on. Okay, in the definition, stay calm or don't get angry. Okay, so this is more of an expression or a phrase that you say to someone, okay? So if somebody is sort of angry or they're a little bit stressed, you would say to them, keep your shirt on, right? So imagine my wife, it's the morning, she's getting ready for work, and she has to leave, but she can't find her keys. So she's looking around the apartment, she's going, where are my keys? I can't find my keys. And she's getting angry. So I might say to her, hey, come on, keep your shirt on, right? Don't get angry, stay calm. So we can use that expression the same way we would say calm down or don't get angry. So any situation where you wanna tell somebody to calm down, you can say, keep your shirt on. Okay, next one says, fit like a glove, and the definition says, to fit perfectly. Okay, so normally, we talk about clothing when we use this expression. So for example, imagine I'm in a clothing store and I want to try on a pair of pants, right? So I go in the fitting room, like the changing room, and I try on the pants, and the sales clerk, she yells out, how do the pants fit? Okay, and I could say, they fit perfectly. Or I might say, they fit like a glove, right? So this could be used for any clothing. You could be trying on a jacket and go, wow, it fits like a glove, or a new hat, or shoes, or anything, okay? Also, it doesn't have to be just clothing, right? Imagine I'm driving my car and I want to park my car. So I'm looking for a parking space and I see, oh, there's a parking space, but it looks a little small, right? Will my car fit? So I move my car into the space and look at that. It fits like a glove. So my car fits in the parking space perfectly. So we can use this expression for any time that two things fit together perfectly, right? Okay, next one, it says at the drop of a hat, okay? And the definition, without needing any advance notice. Okay, imagine I'm at my job, right? And my boss says to me, my manager, right? She says, I need you to fly to Los Angeles today, right? Like right now but I have children, right? I have to go get my children from school and you know, I've got lots of stuff, so I can't go today. So I say to my boss, but I have children. I can't go to Los Angeles at the drop of a hat, right? So I can't go to Los Angeles without any advance notice, right? So I need the boss or the manager to tell me maybe a week before or at least a few days before, not suddenly, right? So I need that notice. Okay, same thing. Imagine my wife and I, we wanna go out to a concert tonight. But again, we have kids, so we need a babysitter. But, ah, 
I know one babysitter who is always available at the drop of a hat, right? So I know a babysitter who's always available without any advance notice, right? I can call that babysitter suddenly and she is available. So she's available at the drop of a hat. Okay, all right, next one. It says fill someone's shoes and the definition says to replace someone and do as well as that person. Okay, so again, let's imagine there's a manager at my office and she is a great manager. She's very organized. She knows how to communicate with people, right? She's very intelligent, but she found a new job at a different company, right? So she'll be leaving my company. So it will be difficult to find somebody with her high skill level. So it will be difficult to fill her shoes, right? It will be difficult to replace her. Same thing if we think about a sports example, right? If we think about Michael Jordan, right? He was an amazing basketball player. Okay, when he stopped playing basketball, it was very difficult for his team to find a replacement as good as him. So it was almost impossible to fill Michael Jordan's shoes, right? So to replace his amazing talent. Okay, we got two more to go. Next one says, tighten one's belt. And the definition is to live on less money than normal. Okay, imagine I lose my job, right? Maybe I get fired from my job. Okay, now I don't have very much money, right? So I need to tighten my belt, right? I need to spend less money. So probably I won't buy alcohol and I won't go to restaurants to eat meals, right? I'm gonna cook my meals at home, right? I'm gonna tighten my belt. Okay, we can also say this about a company or a government, right? If a government introduces some belt tightening policies, this means they introduce policies that are in the interest of spending less money or of saving money, okay? All right, and last one, it says, the shoe is on the other foot, okay? And the definition is the opposite is true or places are changed. Okay, that may be difficult to understand, okay? But let's think about this example. Imagine, I'm telling my friend about my job, okay? And I tell him, there's a lot of really difficult problems at my job, right? There's all these little things that are always really difficult. My friend, he starts laughing. Oh, he says, stop it. He goes, it's not so difficult. You're worrying about too much. Okay, so he doesn't understand it. Now imagine, later he gets a job and then he experiences the same problems that I had. So now he can understand it because the shoe is on the other foot. So because we have switched places and now he can experience the same situation as me, now he understands those problems. So the shoe is on the other foot. Okay, also it's common if somebody can't understand your situation or your problems, you can say, if the shoe were on the other foot, you would understand my problem, right? So this is an unreal conditional sentence, right? If you're not sure what unreal conditional is, well, you're in luck because I actually made a video lesson for unreal conditional so you can look and study up on that video. Okay, I'm gonna erase the whiteboard and I wanna take a look at some written examples using each of these idioms. Okay, so let's see if we can take a look at some of these examples. So the first one here says, usually someone writes a speech for the president, but today's speech was off the cuff, right? So again, today's speech was not planned, right? The president just made the speech sort of right now, okay? All right, next one. First person says, Err, I can't find my wallet anywhere, right? And the other person says, hey, keep your shirt on. It's right over there, right? So, hey, calm down. Don't get so angry. It's right over there, okay? All right, next one. She was happy that her wedding dress 
fit like a glove, right? So her wedding dress fit perfectly. Okay, next one. He is always willing to help his friends at the drop of a hat. So again, he's always willing to help his friends anytime, right? Without notice. Okay, good. Next one. It's really sad that Jane is leaving the company. It will be tough to fill her shoes. So again, she's so talented, she's so skilled, so it will be difficult to replace her. Okay, two more. Next one. When the recession hit, many families had to start tightening their belts. Okay, remember, a recession is when the economy is really bad. Okay, and people are losing their jobs and there's no new job creation. So when the recession came, right, that's what hit means, when the recession started, many families had to start tightening their belts, right? They had to start spending less money. Okay, and last one. I know it's hard to understand, but if the shoe were on the other foot, you'd get it easily, right? So I know it's hard to understand, but if we switched places, right? If we, you know, switched situations, you'd understand it easily, right? You'd get it easily. Okay, that is the end of today's lesson. I hope these examples were easy to understand. Thank you for joining me here today at Maple Leaf ESL, and we'll see you again next time.